Hey everyone, and welcome back to CTF Cookbook. This is Return to Win, also called Ret to Win, an essential pwn technique. Uh, using Ret to Win, uh, we can overwrite the return address in functions to jump to an arbitrary location uh, in our process. So that's a lot to unpack. So here is an example program to show what this means. So we have a main function. This main function is going to call Voln. Voln is going to create a 16-byte buffer and then call gets on the buffer. So we get to control what we put into buffer. Uh, and we see up here there's another function called win that prints out the flag. So again, at first glance, this challenge seems pretty impossible. Our goal is to call the win function, uh, but there's nowhere that win is actually called. So last time we used a buffer overflow with gets and we were able to overflow buffer 1 and write the contents of buffer 2. But here there is no buffer 2, uh, so it seems like we don't really have anything, uh, but that's not the case. It turns out there's a lot of useful things stored on the stack. Every time we call a function, a new stack frame is created. And the stack frame has metadata associated with this function call. Um, so it'll store the local variables, for example, buffer 1 and buffer 2, like in the previous example. Uh, and it also stores commonly three other things. Uh, there's something called a stack cookie or a canary. Um, they've been disabled for this challenge. Uh, this is the uh, compile time options that we use to compile this challenge. So for this one, I disabled stack canaries, uh, which is common in CTF challenges. Later, we're going to enable these, and I'll talk about them later. There's two other things commonly stored within the stack for each function call. There's also something called a stack pointer and a base pointer. Again, I'm going to talk about these a little bit later. And then the last thing stored is something called the return address. So again, in computers, there's no magic. And when a function is done executing, it needs to know where to return to. Uh, and so this is the return address, and it just has to be stored somewhere, and it happens to be stored on the stack. So every time you call a function, uh, you're going to, or the process is going to store an address to some code it's going to return to when it's done. So for example, in this main vuln function, vuln is called, and as soon as it's called, the return address is stored on the stack. When vuln is done executing, it's going to read that return address and jump there and continue executing. So using a ret to win, what we can do is we can actually use that buffer overflow to overwrite the return address. So here we have that buffer overflow. We're doing get some buffer one. Last time we overflowed buffer two, but instead now we're going to up overflow that hidden sort of return address on the stack so that instead of returning to main, it's actually going to return to the win function instead. So here's the solve script. Again, we're going to be importing pwn tools. Uh, here we're going to be loading the main elf. So elf is just a standard for executables. On Linux, they're called elf. Then we are going to start the process. Here we're going to grab the address of the win function. So like I said, we're going to return to that win function. And to do that, we need to know where the win function is located within the process space. So when a process starts, it's going to load all the binary code, the assembly, the stack, everything necessary for the process, and it's going to put it in this process space. And so everything exists in there. Um, we disabled another security protection called pi, which we'll talk about later. And because of that, the function is going to be at a known address, and it's going to be at this address every single time. So we're going to grab that address, and we can do that using pwn tools. So we take the elf, and we say, give me the address of the symbol for win, which is the win function. And here we're going to print it out just to see what it looks like. To do that buffer overflow, uh, very similar to last time, we're going to have that process. We're going to send a line. We're going to fill up the buffer. So we're going to send 16 bytes of A. We then have to overwrite the stack pointer. Uh, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. Um, but just know that the stack pointer exists on the stack somewhere, and we need to overwrite it. And then we're going to overwrite the return address. So here, uh, this is pwn.p64. So if we think about how things are stored in a process, uh, specifically for this type of architecture, they're going to be using little endian. Um, we can't just send a number. We have to send the binary representation of the number. And so to do this, you can do pwn.p64, and this will figure out how to pack. It's called packing. Um, pack the number so that... Uh, the remote process you know reads it correctly uh, and we're just going to send the win address um, and if we do everything correctly we should just jump to the win function and so let's run this challenge we'll do python3 solve.py we can see that it starts this is the process uh, pwn tools is really cool and they tell you what protections are enabled on the the binary um, specifically for this challenge we needed to disable canaries and disable pi again i'll talk about both of these later um, so we're going to start the local process this is the address of win. 
So in the process space, every process has its own address space. Um, the win function is located at this address, and this is in hexadecimal. Cool. Uh, it says it's switching interactive mode, and we get the flag just like that. So we were able to overwrite that return address. So instead of returning to main, a return to the win function. So overall, pretty cool challenge. We took something that seemed impossible, and we were able to, instead of having it return to the main function, it returned to the win function, we were able to get the flag. Um, if you'd like to download the challenge file or the binaries, they're available on ctfcookbook.com. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video, which we will be doing a return to shellcode. So hope to see you there. Cheers.